IP5 class, you are most welcome once again for, to this session. This is lesson 25. We have moved. There are four. I would just like to, 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 to continue asking you to pay attention, put anything that, you, that is going to distract you away from your learning area. And therefore, there are some people who have just joined this program and uh, they may not know my name and others know me. I'm Mr. Manika John, uh, as usual, to take you through science of P5. Now, last time, we looked at, uh, at uh, regular objects and we calculated uh, their, uh, we calculated their, their volume, okay? We looked at their volume and we said that when you are looking at uh, the volume of regular objects, we use a method called calculation method. But uh, today, I want you to, together with me, to drive ourselves to finding the volume of irregular objects. Remind me the definition of irregular objects. What are irregular objects? Yes, in one second, can I see somebody thinking about irregular objects? Or check your notes that you wrote down last time. Tell me what irregular objects are. Yes, I remember, and I know somebody is saying that irregular objects are objects that do not have a proper dimension, or they don't have a well-defined shape. Well-defined shape. For example, a stone. We have stones here. They are irregular objects. Okay? These are stones. They are irregular objects. Why are they called irregular objects? They are called irregular objects because they do not have a proper dimension. You can't tell their, their, their length or their height or their width. Therefore, they are irregular objects. So we want to look at how we can find the volume of irregular objects. Now, I want you to turn with me together to this. Now, um, when we are finding the volume of irregular objects, we use a method that we call displacement method. We call it what? Displacement method. Spell the word displacement together. Displacement. D-I-S-P-L-A-C-E-M-E-N-T. Displacement. The way you hear displacement. Maybe it is going to displace something. Okay? So we use a method called displacement method. Now, in this method, why do they use displacement method? It's because displacement, uh, the, the object that is, that, uh, or, or the, the, the object of which we are going to find its volume displaces the water which is equal to its volume. It displaces. To displace means to remove something from its original position and taking it to another place. Are we together? So in displacement, we use the following materials. When you are finding displacement, you are not going to calculate the length times width times height. But we shall be looking, we shall be using the materials that I have here. One of them is called a measuring cylinder. What is it called? A measuring cylinder. It is right here. Measuring cylinder. You ma mark the spelling very well. M-E-A-S-U-R-I-N-G. Measuring cylinder. We shall also have, with me I have two measuring cylinders here. Are we there? These are measuring cylinders. Find that one of them is, is taller than the other. Okay? Therefore, we shall use a measuring cylinder. And also we have what you call a eureka can. It is called eureka can. It is called eureka can or overflow can. It is called overflow can. Are we there? So an overflow can, how is it different from a measuring cylinder? It is, uh, it is different from a measuring cylinder because this one has what we call a spout. It has what we call a spout. Okay? That's good. What do we also need? We shall also need 
a thread. We shall also need a thread. We shall need a thread in order to find the volume of irregular objects. We shall also need water. We shall need the water. I have put my water in the beaker. I can pour and you see, ah, that's my water. That's my water. So we need water. Those are the items that we need in order to find the, the volume of these uh, irregular objects called what? Stones. Are we there? Therefore, let's go together and we see the steps that we can take when we are carrying out an experiment about finding the volume of irregular objects. Now, we are going only to look at one by one. This time we shall be looking at uh, finding the volume using only a measuring cylinder. Finding the volume using a measuring cylinder. And follow the steps. We shall get the volume of one of these stones. Okay? Now, uh, the first one, pour water in a measuring cylinder up to any level. It might be 100 milliliters. It, it might be um, 10 milliliters or 10 cubic centimeters, like that. Are we there? Any level that you need. Okay? Two, tie an irregular object like a stone using a thread. So we tie a stone using a thread. Okay? Then later, carefully lower the object or stone into a measuring cylinder as is shown in the diagram. So here, we, uh, 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 after pouring, after doing whatever, following the steps, you are going to find out that the first step is that. Are you there? Pour uh, water of any level in the measuring cylinder. These containers that are drawn here are, are what? Um, are measuring cylinders. Okay? After pouring, what shall, we, what shall we see? So let's try to follow the steps the way they, 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 uh, they, they, they showed us. So uh, at first we are going to pour water of any level. My measuring cylinder has the units. It has the units as uh, milli milliliters. Okay? So we are going to pour this water up to which level? Can you suggest the level? At what level should we pour? I'm hearing 10, I'm hearing 20, but let's see. Let's, let's decide to pour at it, and we, we make it up to 30, and we see what, the, what, what will happen. So I'm pouring. Um, I, um, I, it had gone a little bit far. Okay. Yes, this is exactly 30. Are we there? This is exactly what? 30. That's good. So we are going to put it here. Are we there? After putting it there, they told us tie an irregular object like a what? A stone. And the good thing is that I have a stone around. This is my stone and this is my what? Thread. I'm going to tie it. Which method am I using? Displacement method. Why do I use displacement method? Because I don't know the length of this object. And I don't know the width of this object. And its height is not known. So what am I going to do? I'm, I'm tying it. I'm using, uh, I'm using what? I'm using displacement method. So my stone is like this. What's the use of a thread? I'm going to use this thread to lower the stone, to lower this stone into a what? Into a measuring cylinder. Let's go. This is the measuring cylinder, and this is my stone, which has been tied on that thread. Fall up. Let's see what happens. Okay. Let's see what happens. They said, the sorry, sorry, sorry. It, it, it just uh, dropped without uh, care. But I said, carefully. So let's go carefully and we see. Carefully, carefully. 
Carefully, my stone goes. Here we go. Here we go. I'm reaching the water. Finally, I enter the water. The water moves up. The water continues moving up. The water continues moving up. Ah, up to a certain level. And my level, that is the new level, is 40. My new level is what? 40. Are we there? Now, somebody is saying, teacher, can I do this at home? Yes, you can do it at home if you have these materials. Okay? Now, there's at 40. Have we got the, the volume yet? We haven't got the volume. But what are we going to do? We haven't got yet the volume. But what are you going to do to get the volume? Now, my children, look at me. This is our experiment that we have done. Okay? Now, what we are going to do, after finding, you, you, after, after doing that, at first, when we poured the water, it was at 30. How is that? 30 cc. Cc in full is cubic centimeters. Cubic centimeters is the, is, is, is the units used for measuring volume. Are we there? Now, it was at 30. But after putting the stone, it had to rise, like the one which is illustrated on the what? On the blackboard. Let me use this one which was on the blackboard. But at first, let's, let's use that one. Let's, let's find the, the volume of the one we have just measured. At first, it was at 30. When I put, it had to move. It, the water was displaced. The stone displaced the water and it moved up to 40. So how do we find the volume of the stone that we have just calculated? Now, we shall say volume is equal to the second level. The second level, are we there? Minus the first level. Are we there? Are we there? What do we say? Go together with me. Volume equals to second level minus the first level. Now, what is the second level? The second level comes after you have put a what? Uh, put a stone in the measuring cylinder. Are we there? The, then when you put a water in the measuring cylinder, the water had to rise up, up to 40. So we are going to write that in. 40. 40 what? My measuring cylinder had milliliters. Are we there? Minus the first level. What's the first level? The first level is that level that you first put. Remember I said put the water up to any level. Which level did we put? 30. Now, we, 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 we put 30 milliliters. Are we there? A good child draws a line on the side and then says 40 minus 30. And what, what are you going to get? 0 minus 0, 0. 4 minus 3, we shall get, uh, we shall get 1. Are we there? So finally, after getting 10, we shall get uh, 10 milliliters. Now, meaning that this stone that we have measured today is, is occupying the space which is 10 milliliters. Are we there? It is occupying the space which is 10 milliliters. Therefore, the volume of this stone is 10 milliliters. Are we there? Remember the method is called displacement method. Are we there? So this stone displaced the water which was equal to its volume. Are we there? That's good. This was the stone that was that that we made well, that we tested you know, that we were finding it's what volume are we there thank you now let me see what about the one they gave us that the the question which we were, we were given this one here if we used this example what would be its volume the volume of this stone here what would be its volume so let's see aha uh -huh. let's find out and you see uh, one, I told you, when you are going to find the volume, we shall get 
the second the level at which water was after displacement and it is at 50 cc are we there and uh, we shall subtract that uh, that one that uh, the level at which water was before are we there before you put what a stone so we shall say volume equals to second level second level minus first level are we there sometimes you can say second reading minus first reading you can say a final level minus initial level are we there so what is the second level here it is in this other container that is 50 cc minus the first level where the water was before you put the stone that is 30 cc as i told you a good child if you want to get the correct answer what do you do you draw a line aside and say 50 minus 30 ah what are you going to get zero minus zero zero five minus two mi minus three you get two and finally you will get our stone that we were given on the board has given us what 20 cc don't forget the units the units that you are given on the measuring cylinder is what you use have you got my children that's good are we there now this is to remember this one is just important information to remember one a measuring cylinder is used because because it is graduated because it is graduated because it is graduated graduated now when we talk about graduation we don't mean that 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 it, that it has got a degree no it has not got a degree but it has measurements it has the numbers and the units that's being graduated are we there then another thing that we need to know a thread is used for lowering the stone into a container let me remind you something before i end when you are using a measuring cylinder you have to subtract the, the second level minus the first level and the method remains displacement method now members i'm going to put my two numbers just two numbers on the on the board and you will sit down and write them and i see whether people have been following me or not i love you so much i remain monica john continue learning with us and you'll understand thank you